what a year for fucked up cinema it has been. Yesterday I watched The Poor Things by Yorgos Lanthimos and uh, as Al Pacino in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood brilliantly and beautifully said, what a picture, what a picture, what a fucking movie. This is cinema and there's an idiot right now uh, who's probably going to drag me if he ever finds this video uh, who goes, Emma Stone should fire her agent for starring in this movie. <laughs> You have to be a real fucking idiot, in my opinion, <laughs> to not see how stilted everything is supposed to be. Like, this whole movie is a satirical farce on the trappings of polite society and how a woman evolves in that male-dominated polite society and wants to make her name for herself and draw her own destiny while the men around her uh, try to keep her at bay and try to keep her controlled, but it's not working because she grows to be more intelligent and more wise than the men that are in her life. Uh, and the whole thing is played for laughs. This is one of the funniest, funniest, most absurdly weird movies I have seen all year up there with one of the very best dark comedies of this year so far, an alleged career killer Bo is Afraid. Bo is Afraid is a fantastic movie. I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit. It's one of the funniest fucking things I have seen all year. The whole, the entire movie, again, the entire movie is unnaturally stilted and it's by design. It's all, the acting is all unnatural. It's all supposed to be bad. It's all supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. If you don't get that, you're a fool, in my opinion. I don't want to attack people, but I get so fucking pissed when I hear this garbage going, Oh, you should fire her agent! Everyone should fire their agent! When it's the best fucking performance she's ever given in her entire career. Emma Stone continues to astound me at how good she is. Now, I have not seen The Curse yet. I heard a lot of really great things about The Curse, but I want to wait until the show's done. So I binge it all at once. Um... So, so yes, I, I'm going to have to wait for, 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 for that to end, but I'm very much looking forward to watch it because I know it's going to be a, a great time with Nathan Fielder, uh, the Safdie brothers, and, and Emma Stone. I, I'm sure she is absolutely phenomenal in that show, but in this movie, Emma Stone, I mean, I've never seen her like this in my entire life. She is so fierce, so funny. Her timing, her comedic timing was fantastic, and Yorgos Lanthimos is the favorite, right? But she is, I mean... She is absolutely sensational in this movie, and her timing uh, grows to be even better. You know, the first half of the movie, or I guess the first section of the film, is presented in black and white, because this is where Bella Baxter um, starts to learn about life and has a sort of narrow-minded vision of it. And, and as she starts to make a name for herself and, and travel the world with Duncan, Duncan Wedderburn, played by the very great Mark, Mark, Mark Ruffalo... Uh, her, her eyes and, and her view of the world starts to expand, and this is where uh, Yorgos uh, transitions from black and white to color. And this entire movie is a 141-minute absurdist farce, and it has some of the funniest, most unnatural images I have seen all year. Uh, for example, there is, well, Willem Dafoe's character, he's basically kind of like Frankenstein's monster, basically. Uh, his, he, he was the subject of gross experiments uh, by his father and now has to live with the scars that uh, he carries from these experiences. And uh, one of those scars is that he doesn't have an intestinal tract. And so when he eats, he has to burp out a bubble. <laughs> and like, it's, just, it's the first image that makes you go, what? <laughs> like... Probably like within the first minute or two of the movie, you see him burp a bubble and the bubble flows in the air and you've got Emma Stone acting like a little baby, which is funny as hell. Um, it's really funny. Like that, that whole scene where she acts like a baby because she has the brain of a baby, right? She was reanimated. It's a woman that killed herself who was reanimated uh, and the brain of her baby, uh, by the brain of her baby because her, her, her actual brain is dead. And so, you know, uh, the Dr. Godwin Baxter, Willem Dafoe, wants to see... What happens if he puts that 
that brain in her body and she starts to behave like a baby, but then at some point she becomes way more intelligent than, you know, how a normal brain evolved because it evolves at such a rapid pace that she assimilates so many things in her, in her mind that, you know, from the beginning, like in the beginning of the movie, she doesn't, she doesn't really say a lot of, 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 of complete sentences and complete words, right? But at the end of the movie, she's, she has a fully formed arc. She's completely psychologically developed and she's much stronger than pretty much anybody else in this film. So, uh, you know, and, and that psychological transformation that is presented within those 141 minutes is terrific. And uh, again, Emma Stone, the way that she is able to balance out very strong emotional um, uh, emotional undercurrents, you know, from that sort of baby-eyed view of the world to a more mature and refined individual is an, honestly a feat to behold. And she is so fucking good in this movie. She won an Oscar for La La Land. I think, you know, her performance was good in that movie, but it wasn't nowhere near the best uh, female performance of that year. That was Sandra Huller in Tony Erdman. And here we go again. Here we go again. We have Sandra Huller <laughs> in Anatomy of a Fall, the best female performance of the year, in my opinion, still. But Emma Stone, a lot of people are saying she's the Oscar frontrunner. This time around, she may win the Oscar. Uh, I believe, I, I never really believed that Lily, Lily Gladstone is a frontrunner because her screen time in that movie is so limited. But... Um, here, I go, yeah, perhaps perhaps she has a shot to win, and perhaps Sandra Holder won't get nominated like in 2017, which would be a fucking tragedy, but uh, as far as, as far as, you know, all in it's a fantastic movie, but Emma Stone is not the best part of that film, and, uh, but as far as, as I'm concerned, I wouldn't be mad if, if Emma Stone wins an Oscar for her performance in this movie, because it really is, in my opinion, a career best performance. It's one of the best performances I've seen all year. And uh, it's just, it's just, oh my goodness. She was so, she was so, um, it, it, it's such a, it, 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 I'm trying to find the right verbiage to frame it. It is such a unnaturally compelling performance that it immediately starts to win you over as, as it starts. And as she evolves throughout the movie, there's some really twisted stuff in it. Right? There's a lot of sex in this movie. I should, probably, I, should probably, I, should, I should probably point that out. There's a lot of sex in this movie shot with the fisheye lens of like Stanley Kubrick that he developed really, in my opinion, in Barry Lyndon to the extreme. And there's a lot of fisheye in this film. And it, 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 it's, it's there to kind of really distort the practice and the act of sex. Uh, and, and, and it continuously gets distorted. And there's some really weird sex scenes too. Like there's one scene where a father uh, uh, um, wants his children to learn about sex. And so he has sex with Emma Stone's character and he starts, you know, they, they're jotting down things they have to remember and he starts slowly explaining them like what sex is and, and how he performs sex as they watch him. It's weird, but I was laughing so fucking hard at that scene because it is really perfectly acted. And again, Emma Stone is such, she's such a force of nature in this movie. She's unbelievably good uh, in this film. It's, it's fantastic. I really, that performance is a singular once in a generation performance. I know she's going to be in the next Yorgos Lanthimos film called And, uh, but I doubt she'll top it because she was so good in that film. Absolutely, absolutely electric. The supporting cast is also incredible. Um, this is top five most unhinged Willem Dafoe performances only because she, he keeps burping bubbles. That really kind of threw me threw me out, and it was just really weird. But it was it it, it was so weird that I kind of really bite I kind of really bite into it. It was you know it was it was something. Uh, but I I was I was particularly impressed by Mark Ruffalo and the the great the brilliant Rami Youssef, uh, who Rami Youssef, if you don't know, uh, has a show on Hulu called Rami. It is one of the best uh, comedy shows. I've possibly ever seen. Definitely the best ongoing comedy show on TV right now. And in this show, Rami Youssef writes, I think, all of the episodes, really. I don't think there's an episode that he hasn't written. I don't think he... I, he, he directed a few episodes, not all of the episodes. But uh, he, I think he writes everything. And um, that whole... Um, the, ba the basis of the comedy of that show is, in my opinion, to, to sort of make the audience feel as uncomfortable as possible at all times. It's, in my opinion, cringe comedy at its best because every single time Rami Hassan, also played by Rami Youssef, opens his mouth, you just want to reach the... T like, you literally want to reach at the TV and go, shut the fuck up <laughs> because you're embarrassed. 
<laughs> You're so embarrassed. Like, I would literally, there's so many times in the third season, I was like this. I was like, what in the fuck are you saying, dude? What, like, what? <laughs> what is that? And your reaction to this extremely uncomfortable situation is that you, you just have to laugh. You just have to laugh at it. You know, it's not funny. It's not supposed to be funny, but because it's so like, it makes you feel such strong emotions. You get that release, you get that cathartic release and you start laughing. It's one of the most, most well-written shows. One of the most underrated shows out there. You got to check it out. It's so good. I discovered it during COVID and I'm like, I'm obsessed. It's, it's amazing. And in this movie, uh, he, he is a character now that feels uncomfortable. He's, he's, he, he plays a character. Like, he plays basically the audience watching Rami. <laughs> He's like, like, because in in Rami's performance is always very awkward, because he doesn't really know what to say. He doesn't really know what to do. He keeps, it keeps, it keeps fucking up. You think like at some point he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna get the message that he has to stop fucking up. He has to stop doing these inane decisions that not even a like a normal regular human being would ever do. Because he does so many irredeemable stuff, and then, and then. <laughs> does even more irredeemable stuff and you're like what are you doing dude you are literally you are the one that is literally <laughs> fucking digging a hole uh digging digging your own hole to your own grave like what is going on you know and but in this movie he's the one that feels uncomfortable and he's he, that, that, that that sort of awkward feeling that you get while you're you're like oh, should i laugh about this should i should i feel uncomfortable should i be like you know how should i feel how should i react you know he he embodies that through the persona of Max McCandles perfectly he is so funny in this movie. He's one of the funniest comedians that we have right now. Right now, he's a fucking genius. And he is absolutely one of the best performances that he's given uh, in a film or television series. Absolutely, absolutely sensational. Sensational performance. I Everyone, everyone talks about William Defoe. Everyone talks about uh, Emma Stone and Mark Ruffalo. Deservedly so. And no one's talking about Rami Youssef right now, but it's one of the best performances of this movie if not the best performing uh, the best supporting performance excuse me of this movie uh absolutely i mean really a, 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 a complete tour de force performance and just the way that he delivers his lines you know trying to react to, to the sort of very unnatural situation of bella baxter he goes you know he goes what a <laughs> the, the first time he sees bella baxter his reaction is what a pretty little retard and uh, the way that he delivers the lines in this sort of British, in, in the British accent, very sort of stoic going, mm, what's going on, uh, is um, honestly a, a <laughs> is honestly one of the best lines spoken in this movie. It's great. Uh, he's great. But I was really impressed also by uh, Mark Ruffalo, who um, I assume watched The Room before watching this, uh, before, before being in this movie, because Duncan Wedderburn is... Tommy Wiseau in the room, and uh, he is so you know you know the scene in the room where Tommy Wiseau goes down the spiral staircase and goes ah wild is a wild it's that the entire time this is what Mark Ruffalo is doing the entire time <laughs> and at some point there's a scene where he goes. <laughs> Where's my fuck? He says, where's my fucking money? And I'm like, oh, okay, no, yeah, no. He was inspired heavily by The Room because, uh, and the way that he delivers the line, it's exactly the way it was delivered in The Room. And at some point, he goes, he goes, um, he's, it's in the trailer. He's like at, at the top, at the bottom of, of, of Bella's apartment. He goes, ah! And it's like, yeah, this is like Tommy Wiseau when he did Marlon Brando in A Streetcar Named Desire. Uh, Stella, Stella, Stella. So yeah, no. Uh, I, I feel like this is my only point of reference because he's so absurd and his performance is so stilted. It's so weird. It's so alien, but it works so well in the context of the movie because the whole fucking framing device is, is this sort of, you know, retro futuristic world that thrives in absurdity, right? It's a complete, like, like everything about this movie is absurd from the cinematography to the production design, you know, the overuse of fish eyes and, and uh, uh, oversaturated pastel colors when it becomes, uh, when it transitions from black and white to color, you know, artificial sets that are highly reminiscent of the work of Georges Méliès, German Expressionism, and uh, Freder- especially in, in, in the cruise ship, of course, the cruise ship sequence is plucked out of uh, Federico Fellini's And the Ship Sails On. You can point those visual references very, 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 um, uh, 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 very, very well, excuse me, if you've seen those movies, if you've understand the references, uh, if you understand the movements, you know, even, even abstract art, 
uh, you can really you can really tell uh, as as it's um, as it goes along, and, and of course there's a little bit of Terry Gilliam in there. Um, uh, absolutely. So uh, it is a, a very visually rich movie that thrives in uh, being as absurd as possible through his visual through its visual language, through its music, um, through its gothic flair, through its acting. The acting is very stilted. It's very unnatural, but it's supposed to be like that. You know, there are times where the acting is just bad, like it's unnatural and it's bad. Like the Sun, uh, the Sun is a bad movie. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And the acting is so unnatural that it, it becomes an unintentional farce, like the Room. But in this case, you know, the unintentional hilarity of it all, this unnatural, these, these unnatural mannerisms that Emma Stone, that Rami Youssef, that you know, Willem Dafoe, Jared Carmichael, uh, Margaret Qualley's in this movie, but not that, but not, like, she's in it, but, like, not really, like, she's there, but she doesn't really do anything, uh, and Christopher Abbott, whom I loved, I love Christopher Abbott, he's a fantastic actor, uh, and a really fantastic actor, uh, in, 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 in this movie, his character's a little bit underdeveloped, it's kind of like the biggest flaw of the movie, the character's a little bit underdeveloped, because he kind of just, he kind of gets shoehorned in at the end, and it's like, ah, I didn't really need to be in this movie, but there's a really great scene uh, in, um, involving him and how his character's fate ends in the movie that is the funniest shot of the entire picture. So, you know, you, it more than makes up for this sort of underdeveloped narrative. Uh, but, like, everyone's great. You know, Jared Carmichael is also very good in the movie. And everyone plays absurdity to the extreme. There isn't a single actor that isn't in on the joke. And that's what makes this movie so special. As, as special as Bo is Afraid was. And I loved fucked up movies. I absolutely loved fucked up movies when they're done right. Right? Not just like they, they provoke because they provoke. Like Harmony Corinne. Harmony Corinne stuff is just, it's, 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 it's wash. It's terrible. I'm sorry. It's terrible. Because he, he just, you know, he just wants to provoke for the sake of provoking and he doesn't really have anything to say meaningfully. You know? Like Emerald Fennell was the same thing with, with Promising Young Woman. It was, it was terrible. Terrible. That movie was terrible. But Saltburn was actually interesting because it actually had something to say. And it actually did it in a way that was visually rich and at least interesting uh, to watch, you know, with how the actors psychologically transformed themselves. Uh, but, you know, Yorgos Anthemos has always provoked, has always done some really weird and fucked up shit. This may be his most fucked up movie yet, but it's also his best. So there you have it, guys. These are my thoughts on poor things. Uh... One of the best movies of the year. One of the best performances I have seen uh, of all year by Emma Stone. Emma Stone should not fire her agent. She should keep her agent so she can star in more shit like this because the world desperately need people to watch fucked up cinema. Because if you watch things that are just safe and crowd-pleasing, it's boring. It is boring. So there you have it, guys. These are my thoughts on poor things. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media at Max from Quebec. Thank you.